BMW blog is taking a look back at the iconic 8 series, the car that was the flagship in the 90s. This was the car that you saw the professional athletes buy, millionaires buy before they got on their Lear jets, uh, jetted across uh, the country. Um, it was produced from 1989 until about 1999, and Still today, it's certain models sell for over a hundred thousand. It was the test bed for the, all the new technology. It was the first car designed by a computer controlled assist device, or they called CAD. Uh, it had a, it had one of the lowest drag coefficients at 0.28. All right. So the big question is, how does this thing drive? It? I gotta say, probably the best part about driving this car are on ramps. car likes to get up and go. Out on the open road it kind of really just settles down and comes into its own. Um, the aerodynamics of the car make it just literally punch through the air and you don't, because of that, you don't hear a lot of wind noise rustling around. I mean, you do hear some, you know, tire noise and some road noise, but it's not much. You can tell BMW went for the executive market with this. So a lean, comfortable cruising machine. The very definition of a grand tour. This car appealed to the crowd of people that had to go to a, a private airport and uh, catch, a, catch a jet, catch a plane, um, that this was an ideal car to do so. In fact, one of the more interesting things about this particular car is that, uh, that it, it was, in fact, owned by a former professional athlete, and now it's in the hands of uh, a loving BMW CCA owner who was kind enough to loan it to BMW Blog uh, for a week. Um, and over the week, I think maybe my biggest thing that has surprised me about the car is that everything still works on it. There's no squeaks, there's no rattles. Every time I touch the ignition to start the car, it fires right up. All the buttons and switches work. Um, the thing I was sure I would notice driving it would be that there would be squeaks uh, in this pil B-pillarless design, this, this open area, but you can drop both of these. Pop them right back up. No wind noise. It's just amazing. There's nothing catching the wind uh, and making noise when you're driving it. It is, it, it would be the ultimate 90s road trip car. It just wants to go and go and go out on the open road. It was so far ahead of its time that it seems to have aged well and seemed like to be a really good car even now, even though it's 25 years old. The design of the original 8 Series is really rather remarkable in that, you know, yes, it's a two-door executive coupe that is built to go like a million miles an hour on the Autobahn, but it really was a car that was ahead of its time in terms of its design. In fact, it was the first first car that BMW made that was completely computer assist device or CAD CAD drawn, and they were able to get the, the coefficient of drag on the car less than uh, 0.3. Some references say 0.28, some say 0.29, um, but it was really remarkable for the time. And they really let, they let form follow function. By that I mean the whole thing is built aerodynamic uh, from the very front with the iconic um, twin BMW kidneys up front that are really, really small um, to pop up headlights to uh, a long tapering hood that helped house the 12 cylinder motor that it launched with. I mean, how? What other cars do you know that are twelve-cylinder that that come with? Uh, oh, uh, whatever. That, this is the V8, the 4.4-liter V8, by the way. But what other cars that are twelve-cylinder come with a manual transmission? But probably the most iconic aspect then is these windows. One window drops down, and then the next window drops down. And look, no B-pillar at all, none. As far as driving dynamics go, it is truly a GT Cruiser. This, this isn't the car you want to take out an autocross or you want to take out to the track. This is the car 
that you want to go across the United States just as fast as you can on the open road devouring the thing just devours the open road as far as the interior goes of the 8 series um, it is really um, driver centric the whole cockpit is tilted towards the driver the gauges are obviously analog you know that was common in the 90s and it was from a time where BMW believed in one button, one function. You want to do anything on the trip computer, each one has a little sec separate button. Um, in fact, it's like a million little buttons, but each one has a very specific function. As far as the seats go, it's, a, it's an incredibly comfortable car. I mean, it, uh, it has a million way adjustable seats that are still supportive so many years after it was produced. This car was so ahead of its time uh, in its design and use of um, technology that, that to this day, BMW uses things that they developed on this car. Uh, and we're talking like 25, 30 years later, probably the biggest of which is this shoulder uh, strap that's incorporated into the seat. Because BMW went with this completely pillarless design in the middle here, um, they had to come up with where to put the shoulder strap. So they put the shoulder strap in the seat. You can go to a BMW dealer right now and actually buy a BMW that has this exact design in it. And it was originated in this car. The same holds true for computer assist device CAD designs of cars. Now all the cars are built on computer and tested on computer, but this was the first one. After spending a week with the BMW E31 8 Series, I can see why uh, BMW uh, considered the top of the line. It was technologically well ahead of its time. I think probably some of the best examples of this car to buy are one like this with a 4.4 liter V8. The maintenance is a lot more simplified in this compared to some of the earlier uh, 12 cylinders that had two engines that were tried to match up and had two computers and two batteries and two of everything. Uh, of course, you gotta always love the 850 CSI. You know, that car will always command high money. But I think if you're looking for one of these that you wanna drive, I would certainly certainly consider uh, one of these 4.4 liter V8s. Gorgeous car, loves the open road. And after spending a week with, with it, I can see why BMW has chosen to resurrect the series. And, uh, and as the, the lead designer has said that they're, they're looking for the gentleman's race car. And you know, this may not be a race car, but this is certainly a gentleman's car. And we're looking forward to testing the new 8 series and seeing how it compares to the original E31 8 series.